Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Happy Home by Alley Cat Games. It's a two to five player board game that takes roughly 20 to 45 minutes to play and is for ages seven and up. And in the game, Happy Home, you are doing exactly that, creating a happy home. You're gonna be using the Rondell system, which is basically kind of a rotating escalator of sorts, moving your character that starts in the back up to a front space and gathering a card. These cards are basically pieces to furnish your happy home with four distinct unique rooms that you're going to be placing your furniture in as you attempt to acquire unique pieces for that specific room, whether it be a bathtub or a sink or a bed or a dresser, and trying to complete sets. Uh, also trying to get a distinguishing amount of colors in the room and acquiring a finishing touch. At the end of the game, when all the cards slash tiles have been pulled out, you're going to try and score the most you can, as well as gain a bonus welcome mat. If you have the most points, you're the winner of the game. We'll take a look at how to set the game up and how to play, and of course, my review. To set up your happy home, the first thing you do is take the main game board out and place it in the middle of the table. It's a small rectangular board that can be flipped one way or the other, two players or three to five players. And in this case, I'm showing these set up for five, so we're placing it on the five side, which is where lots of spaces are available to you. Now we're playing five players, so each player is gonna get their own distinct meeple and their own player board. And the back of your player board distinguishes what color you are. In turn order, and you can choose or turn order at random, whoever has the happiest home, I suppose, we'll start uh, with the first player being at the very back end space, and then proceeding uh, clockwise will be the second, third, fourth, and fifth players. Those spaces will have no cards there. However, every space after will. But first, you're going to basically remove 10 cards from the stack. And before you do that, you're going to actually remove the 10 cards with the key icons on them and give two to each player. So each player should have a player board, two of the room cards with the key on them, and one space on this board here. Then remove your 10 cards from this deck and deal out the remaining onto the field here. After you've done that, you're going to place the welcome mats out next to the board in the highest to lowest order, seven and then five and then three and then two and then one. And then shuffle the finishing touches cards, the little separate deck, and place one face up. I have this one that has potted plants and rugs, scoring you bonus three points when you have them in each of the rooms. From there, set aside the scoring card, uh, set aside all the extra uh, cards you're not gonna be utilizing the game, and add piles for each of the different pieces of furniture you're gonna be gathering for your happy home. Each player is then going to take their tiles from, from their associated cards that they got at the very beginning of the game with the little key icon on them and place them in the rooms. Placing is pretty simple. You can place them wherever you want as long as it doesn't have a line on it. If it does, it must be attached to a wall. And only certain ones are gonna have a line, but they're distinct with this little icon that has kind of a line right above the furniture. I mean, this side is where you have to place it on a wall. Tiles can be rotated, but they cannot be flipped. Once everybody's placed and all the board is set up, you're basically ready to begin the game. It's a pretty simple setup, but there's a lot of pieces. Happy Home is a Rondell game, and Rondell games pretty much all work the same way when it comes to players taking turns. The player who is the furthest back on the Rondell is the player who takes a turn, which means that a player who is in the back may take more than one turn, provided they're in the back after they've taken a turn. Blue, in this case, is in the back, so they're going to take their turn first. And they can select to place their character anywhere on the rondelle as long as it reaches a card. When they do that, they will then take the card and they will add it to their card collection. Additionally, they will add the tile of the card from the collection and they will place it in the room it's associated with. I need a pink kitchen for my kitchen. I'll take the pink kitchen and place it in the kitchen. Check to see if it has any required effects. Like in this case here, it must be attached to a wall and place it adjacent to the wall if need be. And then from there, they'll check, are they still in the back? And if they're not, the turn is over. It's a very simple game when it comes to playing this. You're gonna be taking your piece, moving it to the next available card, or if you want, you can push it a little farther ahead if you don't need the next card or the next card, so on and so forth. You can go as far as you want, but remember the farther you go, the less likely you're gonna have another turn anytime soon. Followed by the next player in the back. This player is now the new first player and they can take a card. Maybe they don't want the bedroom that is a pink bed. Maybe they want the kitchen piece that's blue. So they can take this, take the card, and they're going to search for the kitchen tile that is blue, and they will place it in their kitchen. After they've done that, they will once again check to see if they're in the back and they're not, so the next player will do so. 
Additionally now, whenever you move from a space, that space should be empty because that's either where you started or where you took a card from, in which case you're always going to refill that space with a new card, which is gonna add new decor items or new pieces to finish your rooms up. So this board is ever gonna be constantly adding new tiles to its fray. And the players are just gonna keep going around this game board here, moving from one space to another, taking one of the cards, adding the tile to their space on the game board, flipping a new card and revealing it in a space they previously left, and then proceeding clockwise in the farthest back position. A few notes with the rooms. A, like I said, you cannot flip tiles over when placing these tiles down, uh, and some of them have requirements that must be met, like placing them on a wall. There are also spaces that have kind of a scratch mark, and you want to cover those up. If you don't, you'll lose points at the end of the game. Additionally, too, when placing specific tiles in rooms, you can place whatever you want in rooms, but you're going to score points for having unique sets of cards at the end of the game for each of the rooms. Like, for instance, the kitchen wants a stove, a place to cut, like a cutlery board, and it also wants a table. And if you have all three of these, you're actually going to score points based on the sets uh, for core items. In this case, it would be six points for three, three points for two, and one point for one. Each of the rooms has their own unique sets. You'll also notice that each piece also has a color identity at the top of the card. In this case, both my kitchen pieces are blue. And for each room that has a blue piece in it, you'll actually score points uh, by having at least three and four rooms that have that color. So having the same color in multiple different rooms as well as full sets in each room will score you even more points. There's also some unique aspects to decor. You're gonna have potted plants, and you're also going to have rugs in the game. And if you look at the finishing touches, this one specifically says that whenever you place a potted plant and a rug in the same room, you'll score three points. Potted plants on their own will score you points based on these spaces adjacent to it that are empty, and rugs will score you points based on the fact that they have two color identities, which they can be utilized for additional bonuses when placing them in certain rooms that need those colors. You're always able to place tiles in the rooms as long as they meet the requirements, meaning A, a kitchen tile has to go into a kitchen space, or, or B, it has to be adjacent to a certain space on the wall, um, but decor items can go in any of the four rooms. And you can place them however you want. There's no requirements as to how you want to place. You can place them in any spaces that they are allowed to fill as long as they can rotate and fit into those spaces, as long as they meet just the two main ones. When this deck of cards runs out, this empty deck, or this welcome deck, uh, this is going to trigger the end of the game, which means that the player who's in the last position is going to be the player who uh, gets to uh, will place these welcome cards on that space there, as opposed to the cards from the deck. And the next player to reach that spot, maybe they don't have any tiles left to take, or perhaps they just want to take the welcome mat, they'll take the mat and then they'll place it on their welcome space on their board. They'll symbolize how many bonus points they'll get for being the first person out, and they're done with the game. And shortly thereafter, everybody else will finish as well with welcome mats, scoring less points, but maybe more opportunity to gain some last minute or last needed items for their happy home. When you score the game, you'll be going to be utilizing this piece of paper here, which will illustrate the types of furniture that you can have for each of the rooms. And you'll score with those. You'll score based on the colors like I explained. You'll score for potted plants. You'll score for your welcome mat. And any additional bonuses you'll score for, as well as if there are any scratch marks on your uh, spaces that were not covered up, you'll lose points for those. Whoever has the most points has the happiest home, and they're the winner of the game. That's how it's played. Happy Home is a gateway game. It's a straightforward puzzle rondelle game that has a few unique mechanics attached to it that kind of combine themselves. One being kind of set collection, which is where you have certain sets you want to place in certain rooms. Another being puzzly, where you're gonna be placing these pieces and fitting them in, into each of the rooms, but you don't have to fill the entire room up, which is one of my favorite aspects of the game. It's more about getting the right pieces in the room rather than making a big cluttered mess for your happy home. And then lastly, it's the rondelle mechanic, moving the person who's in the farthest space in the back up to a new space to gain that piece that they need, and having the opportunity to skip over spaces. What's also cool about this game too is if everybody skips over a space, they don't want that item, you'll actually remove that item and add a new item so that that item doesn't stay there for later rounds because nobody wanted it in the first place. In fact, 
Alley Cat Games does a great job of explaining what the type of game this is. They have on their box four different lines that they're creating. They have the uh, Tin Line, Party Line, Essentials, and Advanced Line. And this is the Essentials Line, which is actually accurate. I think this is a gateway game. It's an essential type of game. It's one of those games where you first get into gaming and you want to have something that's fun and vibrant and straightforward, easy to teach, easy to play with unique mechanics that maybe your group hasn't played before. Rondell is typically associated with kind of more complicated games, um, like Takedo being one of the major ones, or, uh, oh, I got another one over here somewhere. Uh, Glenmore Chronicles, or Glenmore Chronicles 2, which is even more complex. This kind of brings that down a level, making it a little more easily accessible for newer players. Uh, it is pretty straightforward, it's kind of standard, and for some players who've been playing games for a long time, it might be a little bit on the softer end, maybe I'd say on the easier kind of how it goes, but there is a lot of advanced play. Deciding what pieces you need, where you're going to place them, how you're going to place them, and connecting the spaces with additional colors will score you additional points. There's not a whole bunch of different unique ways of scoring. It's pretty much associated with what you see here, and then one of the few finishing touches cards that are available in the game that kind of switch things up. But for a puzzle game that's made for families, it does a great job. It's pretty straightforward, it's clean cut, and it's easy to teach, it's easy to set up, and mostly easy to put away. There are a ton of pieces in this game, but mainly they're just tiles. They're all associated with all these cards here. Uh, the people who I played with this game, all of them really liked it. It was um, a game that most people were just enjoying, smiling. There's not a lot of uh, brute force in this game. You're not stealing from your neighbors all that much. Typically speaking, the most interaction you're going to have is from the Rondell board, which is, ah, I wanted that piece and you got that piece before me. And typically that's because you chose not to advance your piece far enough to gain it because you didn't want to lose too many turns knowing that players might be able to take bonus turns if you do. Like for example, moving my piece all the way around the game board to take this, everybody else might swap, like might steal the remaining pieces uh, that you missed out on. And because of that, they're still behind you. They're all gonna get to take extra turns and you're gonna lose out on additional tiles that you could have gotten uh, when you moved that specific piece that you wanted. So you have to make sure that it is actually worth your while when choosing certain pieces on the game board. The puzzling is like my favorite aspect of this game because it's all about collecting the right pieces, not about trying to fit everything in every nook and cranny where my brain has to like go crazy about. There is another rule I forgot to mention too, which is you can't place on the spaces where the doors are open. So if you open the door and it hits a piece, that's cheating because they can't even get inside your happy home. What's that? What's that? What the heck's the point? And also, there's a middle room. That room's for nothing. It's just to connect all the rooms to create your happy home. I love the artwork. I love the style of the game. I love the simplicity and the complexity all at once. Like, it's a very simple and easy game to explain and play, but there is complexity that you'll start to see as you get involved in creating this little happy home of yours. And it does delve deep enough to where a player who's a little bit more advanced, who's playing with some more gateway players, will still enjoy themselves and have a chance to lose, actually. In fact, uh, it, it can be quite complex in some cases, especially depending on the specific finishing touch you get. Overall, though, it's a wonderful game. I strongly recommend this game if you love rondelles and you love a little bit of set collection and you know people in your life that are also puzzlers. It kind of connects all those together, and I think it does a very good job of connecting them, in fact. So, yes, this is a uh, solid recommendation. I approve of Happy Home, and I hope you do check it out. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Happy Home by Alley Cat Games. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description for you to check out Happy Homes for yourself. Maybe we'll do a live stream so you can see it played. And in fact, if you do see a live stream of the game and you're kind of interested in any game ever, don't always follow my reviews or anybody's reviews. In fact, check out the game, watch the game play and determine if that's a game that you and your friend group will enjoy. There's a game out there for everybody. And I think this one does meet the criteria for a lot of people. All right, guys, the link in the description for the game, as well as of course, if you'd like and you do think we deserved it, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos that we can put out two to three videos a week as well as we also do a Sunday night stream at 6.30 p.m. PST and a Thursday whatnot where we sell games. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, I look forward to creating a happy home with you next time. But my home is going to be just a little bit more happier 